Founded in 1914 in Petrograd, a French-Russian limited company set out to produce lenses and cameras. They came up with the name LOMO, which stands for Leningrad Optical Mechanical Association. A lot of you will probably already know about the Libertel and obviously the infamous LCA. However, before the LCA, there was actually another camera, maybe its bigger brother, the Smena. The very first Smena was actually a pre-war model and it was by a company called GOMS, uh, which was Lomo before they changed their name and uh, ending with the Smena 35, with there being 26 iterations, each one improving on the other, I suppose, with kind of materials and functions. So why did I buy this camera? Well, it was actually when I first started getting into photography <laughs> I kind of just found myself buying loads of cheap cameras off eBay. And uh, when you start researching, I suppose, into film photography, lomography does often pop up. And um, I kind of got hooked, I suppose, on the, the variety of cameras that they sold. However, I didn't understand the correlation between lomography and Lomo and that they were different companies. So when I saw the camera on eBay, Thankfully, it's actually really good condition. Also came with its uh, original box and the faux leather case. And um, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but it must have been in the reach of about 20 pounds, which I guess is what, maybe 30, 35 dollars? So the word Smena roughly translates to change. And it was a way for the company to create an inexpensive, more accessible camera to a wider audience compared to other brands at the time. So the body itself is made of plastic, uh, Bakelite, but the barrel and the lens is uh, glass and metal. The actual lens is a 40 mm f4 with a triplet three element glass design. And the shutter speed is a max of 250th um, ranging down to 1 15th and in bulb. I've just arrived at the coast. I uh, came straight after work. Only a couple of hours uh, of light left, but um, still pretty bright, no clouds about. So it's probably gonna be pretty contrasty scenes today. One of the downsides of the camera is that the max shutter speed is 1 over 250th. Um, with it being kind of sunny today and uh, me having a 400 ISO film, um, it can obviously maybe cause uh, some overexposure by a one stop or two. But I'm not going to be too worried because again it is film so it should survive. Um, but for those who obviously maybe are a little bit more concerned, just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it should be okay. We'll just have to see. So on the front of the lens is the actual aperture adjustment and what you'll notice is an f-stop and a film speed relating to whatever you set it as. So that is actually supposed to be in correlation with the shutter speeds. So initially you set the ISO uh, film that you've loaded which then gives you an f-stop and then based on the symbols on the top of the barrel determines the film speed and the exposure that you're given. 
as you just have a, a viewfinder that you look through for composing and the lens itself is manual and the closest you can do is a meter up to 10 meters and beyond that's infinity. I'm not a massive fan of that kind of focusing but it does I suppose once you'll get used to it determining kind of distance and the way I do it is I kind of know my height and then based on that I kind of multiply how many lengths of me there are to something but then you do I suppose get a bit nervous in terms of how wide you want the aperture so I do find myself just kind of stopping down quite a lot to like f11 really I suppose just to kind of safeguard yourself and again that does kind of maybe slow you down if you're trying to take something fairly quick but that's also the same with you know having to manually expose or if you're kind of well inversed with the sunny 16 rule and uh, once you kind of get used to that I suppose that does help you speed up but ultimately I do find myself kind of getting the phone out looking at the scene through the the screen just to kind of double check and kind of have a bit of a peace of mind with the exposure that you're setting as. So not too far now from the pier. I've uh, just loaded in some colour film and uh, there's quite a lot of colour around here so I'm a bit disappointed I didn't put that in first. But uh, I know the light's still pretty nice actually so I think black and white might still quite good. And uh, actually just past the pier as well there's um, a place known for uh, lots of tractors for the, uh, the trawlers that they take out into the ocean so that could be an interesting section. So uh, let's head on down that way. Unfortunately the light has kind of disappeared and um, not really anything uh, that's interesting to me at the moment. I'll have a few wander around and uh, have a look at the, the tractors and things but um, I think I might end up just coming back here again when the, uh, <laughs> the light is just kind of shining across over the horizon but uh, unfortunately it's kind of disappeared so uh, I think it's time to head back to the car. So I'm back in the car. The, uh, the light disappeared quicker than I actually uh, anticipated. So I didn't quite get to get as many shots as I wanted of the, uh, the tractors. I took a few, but the, the light wasn't too great. I'll have to just come back on another day really. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to head home, get the film sent away, get the images back as soon as possible so I can uh, have a look at them really. I'm not sure if it's the age of the model that I've got and I think I double checked and it was from 1984 or 5 and I have found that the the film advance is, uh, gets quite sticky especially near the end of a roll of film I guess uh, the film itself is kind of wrapped up quite a bit that it struggles to kind of advance so whether then that causes kind of framing issues in the long term we'll have to see Another aspect is actually the 
shutter adjustment rim. It kind of has a, a gritty kind of grinding metal into it. Again, whether that's the age and there could be some possible rust on the inside, but I don't think that's affected the actual shutter speeds itself. The lens focusing is smooth as it probably was the first day it came out of the factory. And again, the aperture, there's no issues with that. Whether I've gotten lucky or they're all like that, I kind of like to think that uh, they definitely stand the test of time. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed by the camera. Definitely the image quality that you kind of get out, you know, especially considering how much you can get for them on the internet nowadays. Would I use it every day? Probably not mainly because of the focusing. Uh, I'm just used to knowing what is in focus and not having to kind of guess and rely on distances and kind of f-stops being kind of stopped down so far that you kind of trust the, you know, your guessing work really. But um, I think it is definitely something to kind of grab off the shelf now and then if I'm not doing something serious, having a kind of a wander around and um, just looking to kind of use some film with, um, yeah, a nice, small, compact camera that just fits in your pocket, really. And um, yeah, have a look. If it's something you can maybe consider, especially if you can find a good quality version that with, you know, in a box or even a leather case. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.